Fear Not, Episode 121. Hi, I'm Billy Atwell, and I believe that consistently facing your fears is the only way to realize your truest self and to make those confident choices that will help you to obtain your deepest held hopes and dreams. I have faith that this podcast series will show you that you are not alone, that it will strengthen you and give you courage to face your fears, and that it will help you to permanently cross over into a life of living beyond your fears. Join me on this journey as we listen and learn from others as they share their experiences in facing and overcoming their own fears. Hello, everybody. Today, you and I are going to be joined by Jerry Weinstock. Hello, Jerry. How are you today? I'm fine, and I'm very happy to uh, be on the show. Are you ready to fear not today? I am. Jerry is the son of Holocaust survivors and grew up in New York and New Jersey. He's also had a varied career in the arts, acting on stage, appearing in films, and even doing performance art on the streets of New York. While producing television in Los Angeles, he created a new cable network, the Game Channel, which is the precursor to the Game Show Network. He's also the author of multiple books, including The Love Spell, my years exploring love and discovering a secret to happiness. Jerry, can you take a few extra moments to fill in the gaps and maybe also give us a brief glimpse of your personal life? Uh, sure. Uh, I've had, as I, you know, a pretty uh, untypical life. Uh, one in the arts usually is, and uh, to go into the arts, you need to deal with a lot of fear. So, uh, I have had. Uh, a lot of experience dealing with various fears. Um, I, uh, my deepest fear, I think, uh, and I think it's our deepest fear, uh, but I can only speak for myself, is um, the fear of being our authentic selves, being truly known. And uh, I'll get into that more uh, a little later on. But... Uh, I've uh, I've lived around the world. I lived in Jerusalem for some time. Uh, I've done, as I said, different things, and I've learned a lot of lessons during that time, which I'm happy, which I try to share in the books that I write. Would you also share with us today one of the biggest fears that you've had to face? Well, as I said, I think it's... It, that being our authentic selves, uh, one of my biggest fears was uh, publishing a memoir that I wrote after I lost my wife, Joy, actually 10 years ago on Good Friday. And uh, I was devastated at the time, uh, but an extraordinary thing happened. She began to communicate with me, uh, I had the experience of her presence and of hearing her and of seeing her in visions and she led me on this extraordinary journey over the course of a year to heal my grief in that year i had the experience are you familiar with the movie ghost sure well in that movie there was a scene at the end in which patrick swayze uses Whoopi goldberg's body to kiss demi moore uh, I had the experience of my wife, Joy, using someone, a willing medium, to literally love me back to life. These were very uh, sacred encounters, but they had a sexual component and very difficult to to communicate to anyone who wasn't there. In fact, I didn't reveal this to my closest friends uh, until much later. Anyway, I was afraid to publish this memoir because it was so personal, so intimate, and I felt so vulnerable. Uh, but even more than that, I was afraid I'd be judged, I'd be ridiculed, I'd be laughed at, people would think I was deluded, and would think I was crazy. And I was, bottom line, I was afraid to be known authentically. And what happened was, 
joy in meditations, her spirit kept prodding me. She kept telling me that this incredible love story that I had experienced wasn't for myself alone. It, I had to share it with the world, that no matter how unbelievable it might seem, I had to uh, welcome the controversy and testify that death is an illusion, that love never dies, and that our souls continue. Well, I found that in my experience, I found that love gives us courage to go beyond our fears. You know, the things that I might run away from for joy for someone who I love so much, you know, I would run through fire for her. And but even so, I was still making excuses until the universe, you know, sort of pushed me over the edge. I'm at a grief conference. This is a couple of years after she passed, I had healed my grief. I had written this memoir, and I was afraid to put it out. And I'm at this grief conference in the evening, and I'm at the bar having a drink, and near me is a woman who was at the conference as well. And she told me she was a massage therapist. I told her my story, and then I asked her, do you think I'm crazy? And she said, no, something similar had happened to her. And she told me how she was giving a woman a massage, a woman whose husband had recently passed. And while she was giving the massage, she had this sense that, the, that there was a young man present, and he was asking her if he could move into her body. I mean, I know this sounds crazy, but this is what she told me. And she, in her mind, said, gave him permission she said she sort of moved to the side of her consciousness and let him enter. He began to massage his grieving wife. His grieving wife on the massage table began to moan as if she was experiencing pleasure. To make a long story short, the massage ended. The woman, with tears in her eyes, who had received the massage, turned over to the massage therapist and said, my God, I had the experience that my husband was here and that he was comforting me and he was pleasuring me. And, and when I heard that, I thought, okay, <laughs> what, what other signs do I need? So I published the book. In the introduction, kind of the first things that I, the first words that I wrote were, and I'm now going to read from the introduction to Joyride, How My Late Wife Loved Me Back to Life. It says, like all great love stories, ours is about sex and death, the alpha and omega, beginning and end. It's also about the eternal nature of love. Many people will be shocked by our stories. Others may be inspired. Some will find it ridiculous. Others, miraculous. Of course, there will be those who consider it blasphemous. Most, however, will find it hard to believe. I can't blame them. If I hadn't experienced it myself, I wouldn't have believed it either. But this is a true story. It happened to me. I call it Joyride. Okay, so I have my first radio interview about this book. And the worst possible thing that could have happened, happened. This radio show was a sort of shock jock radio show, a kind of Howard Stern wannabe. I'm on the phone right before the interview. I'm a little nervous. I'm waiting to do the interview. And then I hear on the phone the shock jock saying to his audience as the lead-in, when we come back after the break, we'll talk to a guy who claims he banged his dead wife in heaven. Whoa. My worst fear, ridicule. I nearly passed out. And then I heard, and I don't know if it was, it was my imagination or not, I heard Joy laughing that my worst fear had materialized so early in the experience. And so then I sucked it up and I did the interview explaining that what I experienced was sacred, it wasn't sex as we think of it, and, that it had, and I had no fear about talking about it after that. Jerry, how do you deal with fear in general as it comes to you? Well, I think, you know, it's changed throughout my life. But uh, recently, and uh, maybe that it's sort of connected, uh, 
my late wife uh, gave me a key to help me with fear, which I have found, I have used, and I find is very profound. A um, few years later, uh, ringing in 2012, uh, I was at a drum circle, and I heard her say to me while I'm drumming, I heard her voice, and I heard her ask me a question, a very simple question. What do you love? And kind of as if in answer to her question, with every beat of the drum, I would say, I love drumming, I love celebrating with friends, I love, uh, I love uh, ringing in the new year, and so on. And by the end of that drum circle, I made a resolution. And I'm not one who makes New Year's resolutions. But hearing from her and what a profound experience I've had already with my late wife, I took her question very seriously, and I made a resolution that the coming year was going to be, uh, I was going to beat the drum for love all year, and that I would declare something that I loved. I would answer her question every day for the next year, and I did. And after about a month, it became a habit, and I, after about two months, I noticed that I felt really good doing it. And I began to research it, and I discovered all the reasons why declaring things that I loved was so good for me. Uh, the quantum effect, the things we focus on expand, uh, the fact that love, thinking about love, thinking about things we love, amplifies and magnifies the experience. Anyway, by the end of the year, I had declared over a thousand one things I loved, and I had discovered that this was a, an incredible way to overcome fear. When I'm thinking about what I love, when I'm wearing love-colored glasses through which I see the world, you see, it isn't necessarily the particulars of the things I love. Everybody's loves are different. Uh, someone else's thousand and one loves would be very different than mine. So it's not the particulars of the loves, but it's the process. It became like a mantra. Every day I, was, I would ask myself, wherever I was, standing in line at the post office, in traffic, paying bills, shopping for food, I would ask myself, what can I love about this? What is there to love about that? And it's interesting we know the power of search. And so I was kind of Googling myself. I, that question, what can I love? What do I love? was like a search term I was putting into my consciousness. And invariably, I would get an answer. So I found that, and my, my new partner uh, says that I'm the, happy, <laughs> I'm the happiest person she, she knows. And she says she sees it as a result of this practice that I do, this mantra of answering that question, what do I love? So when you, to make a long story short, uh, what I do now is I just answer that question, what do I love? Uh, yesterday I, uh, I declared that I love lying in, my, in a hammock, looking up at the w beautiful white blossoms of a cherry tree. Uh, you know, sometimes it's, you know, it can be a delicious food. I love my shower. I love, you know, it's funny. I, you, I, it's, it's, uh, I can't run out of things when I put my, you know, when I actually ask that question. So, and I think it's, you know, I think particularly now we are in the eight, it seems like we are now in an age of fear uh, when politicians not just in this country, but throughout the world, are using fear more and more to manipulate people. Uh, the media manipulates the, the instinctive fear that we all have, which is, a, you know, which is, helps us survive. You know, we, we are programmed to look at what's wrong with a situation as opposed to what's right. It had a very important purpose in terms of our survival, but the media, uh, one of the bywords of the media is if it bleeds, it leads. And so 
we are constantly being uh, manipulated with fear. And, and I think that uh, this, this practice for me has surrounded and filled me and, and, and helped me occupy my heart, taught me that uh, the things I love are like an untapped resource, which if I mine it, uh, helps uh, inoculate me from the fear that is being engendered by the media and by some of a lot of the world that we're living in right now. So that's uh, that's how I uh, am dealing with fear right now. It sounds a lot like uh, sort of creating a gratitude list. It is very much a different kind of approach to a gratitude list. Uh, but yes, it's, it, there's, it's sort of like a cousin to a gratitude list. Um, there was, um, at the turn of the century, there was a famous character, uh, Pollyanna. Sure. You familiar with Pollyanna? Yeah, she gets a bad rap, actually. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you know, as I was doing this over the years, somebody said, you know, this reminds me of Pollyanna's Glad Game. And I didn't know, I had heard the name Pollyanna, but I didn't know about the, the, the books that, were, that, she, that the story came from and the Glad Game. And I did some uh, research about it and read the books. And it's, it's very interesting how she, uh, her father had taught her this game to find something to be glad in, in every situation. And she was so, uh, she, had, she became so good at playing this game, she actually transformed the lives of a lot of people in a town, a lot of sad people, a lot of fearful people. Uh, so yeah, it is a it is a cousin of the glad game, I guess, and it's a cousin of a, a gratitude list. Uh, it particularly is meaningful to me because of the way it came to me through my late wife, uh, and uh, I call it casting a love spell. It's so it's so easy again, like the glad game, that even a child can do it. The more you love, the more you win. The love spell game. Are you ready for the speed round? Yeah, sure. What individual has made the most impact on your life, Jerry? Oh, <laughs> well, I have I have studied uh, what the Buddha said. I have uh, studied, you know, what great spiritual masters have said. But the person I think that has made the most impact on me has been my late wife, Joy. She was a spiritual teacher when she was alive. Uh, she dealt with uh, her her illness and her 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 graduation, as she called it, with incredible equanimity. She was a very, very uh, high being and one who uh, impacted my life then in our love and through the loss and through the, our, her continuing presence in my life enormously. If you could instantly change one thing in the world, what would you change? Ah... <sighs> <laughs> One thing, uh, I, I, I would like to get the world sort of like a <laughs> cable. <laughs> well, I guess what I mean by that is, you know, most of the world is tuned to one or two channels in our 3D reality. And uh, there are other channels, sort of like cable, that a lot of the great spiritual masters of the world uh Jesus, uh, Buddha, uh, and, uh, you know, have talked about. And, but you need to have cable to, to, to go to those other channels. And when you can tune into some of these other channels, which are not necessarily just bringing us what our eyes can see and our hands and fingers can touch and we, what we can smell, this 3D reality, but the other realms and planes of existence that I have experienced, and uh, I think that when people can tune into those other channels, their whole notion of uh, what life is, what death is, what love is, and what fear is, changes. What's your biggest weakness? Probably talking too much. <laughs> uh, uh, what is my biggest weakness? Uh, probably thinking too much of myself. What's your biggest strength? Pro 
probably thinking too much of myself. <laughs> if you could have one book to read, what would that book be? One book to read. You know, I'm having retinal problems now, so I can't read uh, uh, without magnification of some kind. Um, I, I, this is going to sound strange, uh, but I, I would like to be able to read the bark on the trees in the forest. And there have been times when I had been quiet enough, when I could almost read what was written on that bark. Do you have a favorite sound? Oh, yeah, many. Uh, laughter, for sure. Uh, running water in all forms, fountains, the ocean, uh, birds, of course. Um, yeah. And Jerry, if someone would like to connect with you, what would be the best way for them to do that? Uh, well, I have a website, uh, but, the, you know, I think an email would probably be the best thing. Uh, dreammasterbooks at gmail. And Jerry, what parting advice would you like to leave with us today? What I have discovered in the last uh, year or so, and that is that we all love lots and lots of things. We can expand our notions of love. Uh, they say that Eskimos have 50 words for snow because snow is so important to them, and there's so many qualities and nuances of snow. And we have only this one word for love. But the things we like and delight in and enjoy, these are all loves of a kind. Uh, we are, the things we love are an untapped resource, and if we will mine them for the gold of that which we love, we will be enriched both physically and emotionally and spiritually. Something to think about. Thank you. And Jerry, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show today and sharing your story, sharing your perspective, and just being really cool and, and spending time with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and I really, uh, I really applaud what you're doing. Thank you for joining me today. And remember, you cannot achieve everything, but you do have the God-given ability to achieve anything. So stay focused, out of fear, and keep on keeping on. Until next time, be well and peaceful. For more information on today's episode and guest, or for resources that will assist you in overcoming your fears, visit livingbeyondyourfears.com. And don't forget to subscribe to this podcast, where three times a week we move to a life beyond our fears. 